Okay, a good day, Hayom Yom, the 8th of Shvat. The Fidik Rebbe says, this is a, a saying that he said in 1943. The dates, uh, keep that in mind as we see this. In the days especially, in these days especially, when God, by God's kindness, we stand at the threshold of redemption. It was 1943. We must make every conceivable effort to strengthen every facet of our religion. Misvod must be observed bahidur, with beauty, beyond minimal requirements. Customs must be kept scrupulously, nothing compromised. It is a mitzvah and duty of every rabbi in the Jewish community to inform his congregation, again, this is 1943, that the current troubles and sufferings are the birth pangs of Mashiach. God is demanding of us that we return to Torah and Mitzvahs that we not hinder the imminent coming of our righteous Mashiach. A word for all times. Okay, lessons in Tanya. Continuing our story about basically the equipment that we've been given, the gift of Ainsof, the gift of infinity that we've been given within us, which nothing can stand in the way of. This is on page 250. And in Lakuti Amorim, here. It's in the middle of page 46, but before we do that, as usual, Rafur Shlemas. <clears throat> Anybody need Rafur Shlema? We all need Rafur Shlema. They should all have Rafur Shlema Bikara. And um Sivya Haya Basha and um Elka Felisa and um Yehuda Skolda Bas Eliza Hana and Rachel Bat Miriam Chava. Barak bin Yaman and Rachel Blima. Amen before Shiva Chava Daniela Bas Naomi Khana. We'll have them foolishly in all of them, all of them. Okay. <clears throat> the Indian, the topic, what we've been talking about is the Ava Misuteris, the love which is hidden in every Jew's heart, which is a Yerusha, an inheritance from our fathers. So, Kia Avois, the fathers, which is where, where the source of our Yerusha, our inheritance, hein hein hamar kava. What's their virtue that we inherit? They were a chariot. Now this um, is used as, uh, this is a, a metaphor which is used over and over again. Uh, Yechezkel had a vision of a chariot. Uh, many illusions to the chariot, and the, the implication of it, a chariot has no will of its own. A chariot is 100% bottle nullified to the will of the driver. So the driver, in the case of the Avois, is the Or Ein Sof, or God himself, and they have no resistance. They don't pose any resistance. It just goes and flows and directs th itself through them directly. They are Markava, chariot. The Alkane, and because of that, they have merited to draw down to the, they have been merited to draw down a nefesh, ruach, and the shama to their children, after them, ad oilam, forever. And this soul this and three levels of the soul which are these are the three levels of the soul invested in the body nefesh ruach and neshama and these levels of the soul invested of the in the body in the body to every jew 
come from the Esus Spiritus Akadosha, come from the Holy Spirit, the Holy uh, Spiros, Sheba Arba Oilemus Abia, which permeate and transcend through, not transcend, drill through, because it's not transcendent light, we're talking about imminent light, drill through all the four worlds of Atsilas, Bria, and Yitzira, Bria, Yitzira, and Asiya. The call Echon to each and every Jew, the Echon be Echon to Fimim Ragosoi, to each and every one of us, according to the level of our soul, the Madrega, and also according to our deeds. Right? Again, the beginning is wedged, uh, the, the, the beginning is wedged in the end. It's, we have to have, we have a certain soul root and drawing that down and expressing that indeed. Now, call upon him, and at least, he says, or in this, we'd better translate it, even, this applies what we just said about every Jew having a soul invested in them, three levels of the soul, which come from the avoys, which come from that level which is totally bittled to the or and so. So this includes a filo lekal shebekalim, even the lightest of the light, and even the sinners amongst the Jewish people. So even them, no matter how low they are in terms of their manifest behavior, they draw down through their marital relations, a nefesh to nefesh to malchus de siya, that was going from bottom up. They draw down a soul of the soul of malchus of siya, the lowest of the spiritual uh, components of the world of Asiya, which, as he says, is the lowest level of holiness in Asiya. And Afal became, nevertheless, since these powers, these soul powers, are from the ten holy spheros, which are included in all of them, and this we talked about before, not only that every sphera includes all other spheres, but this also pertains to the descent as it comes down. Every lower level includes the higher level all the way down. So, Gam, if you go up from Malchus of Asiya, right, up to Chochma of Asiya, so the soul of even the lowest of the low, which comes out, remember Malchus is the womb, and comes out directly from the womb of Malchus of Asiya, includes in it Pachma de Asiya, the highest level of Asiya, and Shibasecha, which within that Pachma of Asiya, Melubeshis Pachma de Malchus de Atsilis, comes the Pachma of Malchus of Atsilis. Malchus of Atsilis and includes Pachma of Atsilis, right? Because the, so, the, all spheres include each one. So the lowest of the low has a soul which is rooted in and which, and is important, it contains something of the essence of Chochmah of Atzilus, which, of course, Chochmah of Atzilus, Chochmah Me'ayin Timotze, includes the Ein Sof itself. As he said, Shiva so in Malchus of Chochmah of Atzilus, uh, in Malchus is Chochmah of Atzilus, and within that is Chochmah of Atzilus, Shabomer or Ein Sof Mamish, and in that Chochmah of Atzilus, there shines, radiates, the light of the infinite one, blessed be he, Mamish. So every Jewish soul, every Jewish person, better, has a soul, no matter how low a person may be in terms of behavior, a person is never really low, because every Jewish soul has, has something of the Ein Soboruchu, mislabish and clothed in the soul that's driving and enlivening him, and not that's the end, but that's enlivening his, his, his uh, intuition or his awareness of, depends of if he's aware of it or not, of Kedusha. But you can see, as is written, it's written in the Pasuk, ki, uh, in Mishle, says, Hashem bechokma yesod ores. Hashem, now this is the way of normal translation, right? You, you symbol pshat. Hashem in his wisdom, he founds or it makes a foundation to the earth. He's built this thing, this construct of creation very smartly with wisdom. But we take it more panemius that Chochmah is invested in. 
the Hochma of the Abishter himself, the Hochma of Atsilis, not the other of the Abishter himself, the Hochma of Atsilis, in which is invested the Or in Sorborach, the infinite one himself, is down here embedded in the foundations of the earth. And another Pasik, it says, Bakulam Bahma Asisa. Another Pasik in Tilim that says that uh, yeah, it says everything is made with wisdom. Again, the Pshad is he made everything wisely. But we mean here everything, all the way down to the bottom of the bottom of the lowest in creation, is invested with, has Chokhmah invested within it. And Chokhmah again has the Ainsof invested within it. So the Nimsa comes out. That the infinite one, blessed be he, who is, in, is, is enclosed in the hachma of the soul of a person, whoever the person is, whoever the Jewish person is, and the hachma of the soul, with the light of the infinite one within it, which is enclosed within him, mispashetas, it spreads out, bechol bechinas and nefesh, into all the levels of the soul, kula entirely, lachayosa, to enliven it. Nebechinas, reisha v'yad bechinas ragla, from head to toe. But you can see, as it's written, hochma tichya bailam, that hochma enlivens the one who possesses it. And because hochma enlivens the one who possesses it, and hochma and Chochmah has a window, I keep I always use that expression, a window into the Ein Sof, so the Or Ein Sof itself, the Holy One, blessed be He, the Ein Sof Boruch is invested in every single Jew. Well, the Pa'amim, and sometimes, a little bracket here, sometimes the a Poshe Yisro, you know, one who's dug into sin, negative behavior, can uh, in, can can have a uh, in, there can be invested or drawn down into him that person, clippers, and even though that person is in the depths of the clippers, nevertheless he can draw down a very high soul, as is written in Sefer Hagilgulim from the uh, from Chaim Betal. And on this this is where we're ending today, but on this there's a very interesting note in uh, Lessons in Tanya. Anybody have a lesson in Tanya open in front of them at the moment? No? Uh, where is this? Mm-hmm. Oh, here it is. Oh, I'm going to read it to you. It's, it's a comment of the Rebbe. It's, I mean, I'm reading, I found it very interesting, so I'm sharing it with you. A soul that has, this is the, that, about that last part, that they, even the soul who's sunk into Amke ha clippers, the depths of clippers, and he's trapped there, still has a, a way out. Why? Because of the fact that, well, we'll listen. A soul that has fallen captive in the hands of the clippers remains in this state until the clipper release it of their own will. This is the rabbi commenting. The clipper has to release it of its own will. Anything in the hold of the clippers cannot be wrested from them against their will. Or the, there's a principle, it's, quote, it's in quote, God does not make un, unjustifiable demands of his creation. It's a quote, and, and it's, it's usually referred to, whatever you're going through, know that it's coming from God and that you are, it's meant to be, meant to be given to you for you to deal with in such a way that it becomes... Uh, visibly, uh, obviously positive. But he cl- implies this, not he, the Torah, the Rebbe is telling us, when the Torah said that, that it, and God doesn't come to a person with un- un- unbearable troubles, it applies to the clippers also. God does make unjust- unjustifiable demands of his creation, and the clippers are part of the creation. So that holds true, as he said, even in regards to clipper. In the case of a child to be born to sinful parents, the clipper willingly releases the soul in the hope, get this, why is it, you said we just said they don't willingly release. Well, the clipper, when they see such a deep, deep perversion, I'll just use that word, going on in the child as a result of the family that he's born into. So 
he's in a family that's like that, that's negative, that's in the in the in the trap of the Clippers. So the Clippers hope that such a child will be influenced by its parents. That's why they release it, and will become a sinner like them. In this way, the Clippers stand to extract an even greater measure of vitality from the holiness of the soul by means of its eventual sins. However, having such a lofty soul, the child is able to overcome the obstacles imposed by its parents. Once it's released and it has such a lofty soul, it can overcome the influence. So it says, no matter what your nurture has been, you have a nature which is so deeply holy that you can always come back home. You can always do shuva. You can always get released from the clippers. So the child is able to overcome the obstacles imposed by his parents' wickedness and may rise to the level of a tzaddik. And he means tzaddik alpitanya. In this way, paradoxically, it comes to pass that a tzaddik may be born to wicked parents because of their wickedness. Interesting, no? Okay, so... Uh, Questions, comments? Bobby, um, I was, it's Aviva. I'm sorry I didn't raise my hand, but I'm wondering if nobody has a lot of comments or if they do, can we start Friday? Because Shabbos is very long. I don't oh, know yeah. if you're ready for no, that. I, I, I am not aware. So I see Friday tests and 20, 20 is Peric Yud tests. What do you mean? It's the whole Peric? No, it's not so. Oh, wait, I'm sorry, I think I'm the wrong side. Uh, nine, where does, 10, where does 10 start? All right, I'll take your word for it. Um, I'm okay with that. Any objections? So where are we starting? Uh, I just okay. want to make a tiny comment about yeah. the Kupas releasing on their own will yeah. that it... Um, reminds me of internal family systems which i'm i got into yesterday i had a, a therapy session with someone who was doing internal family systems and she and i i found like these sticks in my chest like they were holding me up and she at she asked me to um ask them why are they doing that why are they there why are they holding you back yeah, like why? Why do they feel they need to be there in my chest? And it turns out that they were trying to protect me, and and like the whole process of going to this to the to the Russia, like inside of me, I guess those sticks are considered the Russia and the klipa, and asking them to please release me, like that really resonates with, you know, right. Hashem's creation. Even that's a creation. Those those klipas yeah. that. Yeah, they are. But remember, what we, according to what we just read, they'll never, ever release you. And this is what we just read. I'm not saying, this is not me talking, what we just read. They'll never, ever release you unless they feel they can get some advantage from it. Yeah, right? but but in, in the case that the Rebbe brought, they, they, but, but they also can might release you if they feel understood and integrated, if they feel like they could well, have... Well, that's, that's not what the Rebbe... I'm just saying that's not what the Rebbe said. But that's okay. The, the advantage that they can get, I mean, we'll go a little further even than you, um, that that they, they because their panemius desire, now this is not what the Rebbe said today, but it is said many times in Josidus, the panemius desire of the Clippers is to be relieved of their burden. Remember the, 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 the burden of, of, of holding the soul in captivity because they themselves, remember the, 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 the marshal of the Zoyna, you guys remember yeah, the Marshal of yeah. the Zoyna? That's the Marshal. That even the, the Zoyna has to do everything she can, this clip, to keep the soul captive. But her panemius will is to do the will of the king. Is to be connected to Atmos. This is exactly, exactly. The, the part. Exactly. This is exactly the protectors. Their, exactly. Their, their will, their deepest will, is to be united with Atmos, with the source. Yep. They don't exactly. want to have to carry this burden and do this job. Right. So it sounds exactly. very, very much like... Like not this. what the Rebbe, not what the rabbi said today, but it's very aligned with Hasidus in general. Yes, absolutely. Uh, someone actually has a hand up here. That's or me. 
Okay. Hi. Hi. Yeah, Roy. Hear me? Oh, okay. oh Riff goes, Riff. No. Yeah. Riff goes. Um, this makes the clipas sound very anthropomorphic, which is very weird. Well, that's and okay. We Every, we're, it's, all, it's all anthropomorphic. What do you mean? Hashem made it all in his image. That's Everything's separate. in his image. Hmm? Go ahead. What? It's not. It's what? not a separate force from within ourselves. It is a separate force. The clippers are a separate force. But nothing is separate from Hashem, of course. But every but it's 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 a separate force. It's a force of negativity versus the force of Kedusha. Okay. Which is contained within ourselves, right? Well it's they're, not they're in ourselves, but there's there's spiritual, there's spiritual con. How best to put them? There's spiritual um, energy centers. There's spiritual energy energy centers, and they are invested in as the soul is a spiritual energy center, and part of it is invested within us, nefesh ruach and neshama, and the clippers are they are that spiritual energy gets invested in us. Absolutely. No, it's okay. Uh, it's Kayla. Little, yeah, it's a little more acceptable and understand. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Kayla, your hand is up. First of all, thank you. I'm very new to this group and I just love the learning this morning. It's gorgeous and comforting and beautiful. I really appreciate it. I'm just wondering how we understand i'm not sure if this is off like the klipa like of hamas may their name be obliterated like that kind yes. of klipa. okay uh, that's uh, that's an externalization of the the worst clipper that is it's in an ex invisibly external but to rifka's so just back to the way you're discussing rifka it couldn't have any external manifestation if it weren't embedded in the internality of the soul so Gimel Klippas at Timaeus, <clears throat> we spoke about, <clears throat> actually I had a conversation, I, I don't know, if, uh, some of you know Moshe Ganut, uh, and uh, by the way, he's for bringing tonight in Crown Heights, he's a student of Rabbi Ginsburg, he and I had a conversation about this very topic, which I asked him, um, since the question <clears throat> that I asked him was, uh, since Gimel Klippas at Timaeus, the Alter Rebbe says, you know, that, that, Goyim, and some goyim, but it's shy it's relevant to a goy to be motivated by Gimel Klippas of Timaeus. Now, Gimel Klippas of Timaeus is something that you have absolutely nothing to do with, right? These are the things that are prohibited. So I asked them, if that's true, <clears throat> how is it that a non-Jew who has, who's got these Gimel Klippas of Timaeus embedded in him, can have a place in the Torah? Because we know they do. Because there are Sheva Mitzvahs B'nai Noyak. There are seven Mitzvahs that apply to even a non-Jew. So, I think I forgot your question. Um, <clears throat> but I'll, I'll say what I'm going to say then. If I hit it, you did. If not, you'll answer it again. So, that means, as we said today, there is a process by which the Gimel Klippas of Timaeus can be rectified with enough energy because, as I did mention just now, <clears throat> their inner, inner, inner will, nothing has an inner will except what God has, except that it's part of God. But in a Gimel Klippas Tamir, it's so camouflaged, that wanting to be part of God, that it lives off separation. It lives off, you know, it lives off passions that are just physical passions. And there's energy there. And that energy gets mistaken for the kind of satisfaction that they really want, which is godly. So when the, when those clippers can, when a person gets to a level, and here we're now talking of a non-Jew, a Hamas person, can do shuva. That's the bottom line. And is meant to do shuva. Everybody, non-Jews, Hamas, everybody, will ultimately do shuva. Now, I don't know if that answered your question. Did it or not? First of all, Wow. Yeah. And that brings me just brings me to another question <clears throat> of like, is that what we're meant to daven for? You know, we're meant to daven, they should be obliterated. We're meant to daven, they should do tshuva. 
Okay. Yes. Obliterate the clipper and save the good the good. Wow. Again, like you know, it's like the same thing when we talk about the attitude we should have to physical things, which gets very un- mistakenly understood by pe- by most by many people who learn the Tanya. It isn't the physical thing that's the bad. It's the embed- embeddedness of the clipper in the physical thing from which uh, from which physical thing that clipper can be released. So we are obliterating them. I mean, yes, we have to kill them. Well, you, when it comes to Amalek, we have to kill them. They're dead. They're dying. Is their return? Remember, this is an interesting thing in itself. I'm just one one thing. I think we're spending the time on this, but it's a very important thing. In Pirkei Avos, it outlines uh, when you're five years old, you come to this. When you're 18 years old, you come to the Torah, etc. And it increases up. And 70 is an age of Savea of, 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 of uh, you come to the age of wisdom and then 80 Gavora and then at 100 I forget the number is your death you die and the, the, the Rebbe uh, I learned this in many different places because I can't point to a particular city that says and it's, it's actually it's not the right Chazal ask on this this progression is going upward 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 you're requiring more and more maturity more and more wisdom and then, and the pin- pinnacle is death. So what, 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 that's, what do you mean? The pinnacle is death. You're dying. So you don't die. The, the, your physicality dies, yes. But your soul goes on and on, on to greater illuminations and greater understandings and greater closeness to Hashem. So yes, we're commanded to obliterate, kill Amalek. But the spirit, which has been enlivening Amalek, all these years, right? That's a phys- that's a ruchni sticker thing, and it goes on and on, and it can be it can be through various processes freed of its attachment to the spiritual clippers, and even go on higher, as we just said in in this time you know, that we learned from the Rebbe that, that that this soul of the sun, who is embedded, which got embedded in the clippers, once the clippers release it, it can become a tzaddik. Can you imagine that? A Hamas guy becomes a tzaddik. Amalek guy becomes a tzaddik. Abi, but you need a goof to do tshuva. So if I understand what you're saying is... Yeah, the, you're absolutely right. The tshuva has to happen down here. That's where tshuva is. Yes. Yeah, good point. So, I mean, if it's a chorus Amalek and our obligation is to kill them all, which it is. Which then- it is. And they're they, not going to they're not going to do shuba right but they, there's but there's, there is a spirit they, the bird, to, mm-hmm. they don't think they're doing shuba they're not doing shuba no they're not doing shuba they're not doing shuba not for sure but you're saying it's possible you're saying it's possible. Yeah, well first of all they could do shuba but Ron is pointing out that that when we when you kill the Amalek, when you kill the Hamas person it's too late for them to do shuba they're not right. going to do shuva, but things are happening up above, right? And then everybody, and this is what Moshe Gunu pointed out to me, everybody, listen, ain't old milvado, right? There is nothing besides God. Everybody has a root, a place in the essence of God, no matter who, what they did down here on earth. The, the one who dies before shuva is not doing anything about that, but that place is still present and that's why uh if the person does do shuva down here below because that everyone has that place of connection with hashem no matter what they're doing down here below if they change their mind and turn around down here below and do shuva then that place that they have in hashem which is always there becomes revealed and they have now performing the sheva mitzvahs when they know Uh, well, thank you. All right. Um, well, that didn't get us too much love legs to go on a little bit. I mean, I'm game for five minutes if you want to. I'll do it. Let's can just, I just do get it. A tra- can I just get a translation, please? I'm sorry. Like uh-huh. the, the Gimel Timaeus. Are we talking about Avodazara Gili Arias? Is that what you're referring to? Gimel? No, no, no. Those are the three deadly sins, right? These are Gimel Clippers of Timaeus refers to, there are two groups of Clippers. There's one which is called Clippers Noga, 
a light clipper which godliness shines through and then they are the three unclean clippers and they would correspond to three languages in the prophet Yechezko, uh three different words he uses that's the gimel clippers satameas thank you hini yeah. hahokma Ochma is makor ha seichel. I'm back inside. Ochma is the source of seichel, the havana, and understanding. That's Ochma. The hila ma'ila mehabina. Ochma is higher than bina, right? Ochma bina das. If you go in a straight line, shu havana sa seichel b'hasagosla. Bina is the understanding of intellect and really grasping it. The Ochma hila ma'ila mehavana. Ochma is higher than understanding b'hasoga and grasping. The Himakorlahan, and it's the source to them. Vazelashan Hochma, Hochma, if you take the word, just look at the letters, it's Kayachma. These the Chof, the Ches, the Mem, and the He in, in a little different order. It's the power of Ma. What's the power of Ma? Ma is the power of what? To say, I don't know what it is, but it is. The power to be bittle in the face of that which you don't understand. That's why Hochma is a Nakuda, it's just a point is it has no dimension because it's totally given over to the ein sof. It has no, no ego whatsoever. And that's a level of, of given overness, which is not the function of understanding. It's not musig umuvin. And it's not grasped in the level of, of understanding yet. And therefore, since there's no even inkling of a yesh, of a substance, of a something in Chokhmah, it's just an akuda, which is a point of no dimension. Therefore, it's a fit container. This is an interesting, right? Since it has no self and no definition and no, therefore no separation, it's a container for the Oinsa Borcho. Infinite blessed be he. The leismash of the Fisabe, as the Zohar says, which no thought can grasp. That's Chokmah. Beloche, therefore, call Yisrael lefilo hanashim, uh-oh, all Jewish people, even women, the ame ha'oretz, and simple people, hemaminim b'Hashem, they have emuna, not not understanding, but emuna in Hashem, she'emuna hilamayla minadas, because emuna, belief, is higher than knowledge. The hasoga and grasping intellectually. Kiposa yamin lechol dover. The expression: a fool believes in everything. Now, this is foolishness on the on the positive side, where I've given away. I've done everything I can to understand. So let's let's, let's be careful here. I've done. I've reached the limits of my understanding, and now I give myself away, as the Rabbi Rashab says, that to understand things is to understand that you don't understand things. In other words, no matter how you go in understanding, there are levels you'll never understand. So in the Pasuk, it's called a fool. The Odom, and a clever person, you mean, says a fool, <clears throat> he, he has faith, Yamin, Amuna, he has a faith in everything. The Odom, and a clever person, this is someone who uses his mind to the trick, you know, to <laughs> very, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, with finesse, who uses his mind with an S, he will, that's the one who will understand, the one who's got trickery in his brain. And in relation to the Holy One, blessed be he, which the Holy One, blessed be, of course, is higher than intellect and das. No thought can grasp him at all. We're all fools <laughs> in a positive sense. We're all fools by him, is Borak. Because you see, if Anibar, it's written, David, I think David Amelek says, I'm not sure. He says, I am a fool, and I don't know. I'm like an animal, and I'm with you. In other words, knowledge doesn't define my ability to relate to God. It's the natural, as we've been saying, natural implantation of the Nefesh Elikis. That's just your nature, which is above, in this case, thought and reason. That's how I can connect with you. And I'm continually with you when I suspend my rational way of thinking. He says, he says this explicitly. This that I'm a fool, so to speak, or a, a coarse person, and like an animal, 
That's what makes me tamid imach, continually with you. Therefore, even the lightest of the light, who push Yisrael and the sinners amongst the Jews, when it comes, when, 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 when the rubber meets the road, they'll, they'll give their life away for Hashem, even though they may have been a determined atheist or a full-fledged sinner. When it comes to push comes to shove, they'll give their life, in most cases, he says. And the Saivlim Ainahim, the Saivlim and Koshim, and the eyes, Shalom Yechapir by Hashem, never, it will not, will not deny Hashem. The Afim Haim Burim, even if they're fools, or not fool, the Bur is a coarse person, the Ami Haoretz, and a simple person of the earth, Vein Yodim Gedul Hashem, and they don't know anything about the greatness of Hashem. They'll give their lives over to Hashem, because it's deeply rooted, as we said before, it's an inheritance to us that we can't escape. And some situa situations can bring that out. And even the little that people do know, and and they don't, but they don't think about it, even the little that they know, and the ain min is binding him cloud, and they don't think about this. That's not that little that they know, which they sort of take for granted. That's not going to cause them. That's not what causes them to be moisture nefesh, to give themselves over to Hashem, because of this das this bindingness the Hashem cloud, because of their knowledge in Hashem. Not that at all. That's not what uh, empowers a person to give his life away or her life away to God. Elabliyshem das with bindingness. It's without das and his bindingness. That's what makes it impossible to deny Hashem. Without any reason, without any claim, without any answers at all. Behind the Mishim, why is that? And here's our punchline, I guess. Hashem Echod, because the one God and the oneness of God. Meir umechaya kol nefesh, kol nefesh, is what's enlivening the entire soul. Al yidei hislab shusi bebichin eschofmot through that oneness of God. This is get back to where we were today. Through that oneness, that ein sof itself being enclosed in the chokma shabo of the soul. Shehila ma'ilam in adas, and chokma is higher than das. The seichel hamusag umuvin, and higher than anything which can be comprehended. And that's where we'll stop. We'll begin the parak Friday, tomorrow, and Shabbat. Uh, Rivka, your hands up. Is it up? I mean, it is up. Are you asking a question? She probably just left and didn't take it down. Thank you. Okay. We'll see you tomorrow, Mr. Shem. Bye bye. Bye.